Uh, other information we've been talking about this week, too, includes Form Energy in the Northern Panhandle. Delegate Pat McGeehan was on earlier this week, uh, adamantly and vehemently opposed to Form Energy. And we also had the Secretary of Economic Development in West Virginia, Mitch Carmichael, on this week, very much in favor of the Form Energy deal. So I figure we'll talk to another delegate from up around that uh, way. That's Delegate uh, District 3 out of Brook. Jimmy Willis, who is also a character in My Cousin Vinny. So I'm already on your side here. Jimmy, good morning to you, buddy. Good morning. How are we doing? Great, man. Have you seen My Cousin Vinny? Uh, not in a while. Dude, not you, you got to see My Cousin Vinny. Jimmy, there's a Jimmy Willis in My Cousin Vinny. <laughs> I'll check it out. <laughs> check it out, man. Come on. Hey, uh, Jimmy, let's talk about Form Energy. And I understand you uh, support Form Energy and the state's uh, for lack of a better way of putting it, stimulus money and bringing them into the northern panhandle. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I support it uh, 100%. I think Mitch uh, hit another investment out of the park with this uh, over at uh, Economic Development Office, and I think it's going to be really good for uh, the northern panhandle. Uh, tell me, in regards to Brook County and Weirton, uh, what's, uh, what's the relationship geographically? I know you're close. Yeah, so actually part of uh, part of Weirton is in Brook County, mm-hmm. um, so it, it does divide the town a little bit. Uh, and we, we have a motto up in the northern panhandle, what's good for Weirton is good for Brook County, and uh, vice versa, what's good for Brook County is good for Weirton. So we, uh, different counties for the most part, but we uh, work as a pretty cohesive unit um, for the most part, uh, most of the time. Uh, so it's, it's just a good investment. It's going to be good uh, for everyone in the area and provide a lot of good paying jobs for hardworking West Virginians. Part of Pat McGee's concern, uh, first and foremost, there was a, a China part of this concern that he talked about. Another part was that this is an unproven company, unproven industry, and essentially uh, West Virginia's gambling money, kind of like becoming like a venture capitalist, so to speak, by putting almost $300 million into this unproven business. Do you think he has a legitimate concern, Jimmy? Um, if, if, if every deal we did, uh, like the new core deal, the Berkshire Hathaway deal, if every deal we had as a state had as many, uh, security, securities to it as this deal did, I would understand, uh, what he was saying there. But this deal is safe. Uh, we're not just handing over the money. We, uh, it's going to go into escrow and they're going to get it when they hit, uh, the benchmarks, benchmarks that form and, uh, Secretary Carmichael agreed to, uh, in negotiations. Secretary Carmichael discounted any Chinese involvement. Delegate McGeehan did not. He felt that there was, uh, and as a result, we should not be doing business with that uh, country. So what are your thoughts on this? Um, there, there, There's very, very little evidence of any Chinese uh, involvement in this company uh, at all. There is some Singapore connection, but Singapore is a very good ally of the United States. And it's not that they are owning the company. It's that investment firms with ties to Singapore have invested into this country. It's very safe. Uh, the CFIUS D, uh, program in Washington who checks companies for foreign investment did one on Form Energy, and there was a no determination in the matter. Uh, they, found, <clears throat> they found no problematic investment, and it's uh, that that's not, not an issue. Joe. Delegate, uh, one of the... Uh, when you bring up uh, other, I guess, state ventures like Nucor, uh, one of the criticisms I hear is that when you look at uh, what we've done in the past here in West Virginia and some of these projects that are still pending like Nucor uh, up here, Macy's and Procter & Gamble, these are Fortune 500 companies with a, a long history of, of um, uh, you know, being in business and, and uh, being doing the business well. Uh, Form Energy is a bit more of a, this is kind of like a venture capital arrangement that they have with the state of West Virginia. So there's some concern about a lack of history with this company. However, I do understand they have another site that is up and running and employing about 400 people in 84 Pennsylvania, which if people don't uh, know where that is, that's uh, southeast of Pittsburgh, uh, probably about 40, 50 miles. Do you know a little bit about that facility and, and what can we learn from what Form Energy has already accomplished? Uh, I think I think it just proves that uh, them having that facility is that though they are more of a startup than your new cores or your Berkshire Hathaways, that this is something that uh, isn't just going to be a one-year thing and then they're going bankrupt. This is going to be something that could sustain jobs for many, many years. I know Pennsylvania really wanted to bring this facility in as well, um, up in 84 or up around there, 
And I think it just proves proves our point of this this is a safer investment than some delegates are letting it on to be. Do, do we know what they're doing in 84 already? Uh, I'm not sure exactly what they're doing up there. I know there's um, – I believe it's a similar facility, but I couldn't give you these uh, specifics on what is going on up in 84. One of the uh, aspects of this deal that Mitch Carmichael really trumpets, and and others who are supportive of it, and I'm sure yourself too, is uh, the fact that the state has essentially collateralized the land and the building that will be constructed, where the state essentially is operating like it has a mortgage. It owns the, the, the physical plant and the property until such time to form energy hits some benchmarks in terms of number of people employed and who they're, how much they're paying and things of that nature. Uh, so it's possible if this form energy uh, business goes under, doesn't ever materialize, that the state may end up holding a building and land. Is, there, uh, has, has there, is, is, is that in essence true, what, what the uh, deal is? Yeah, so that that is a parameter of the deal is that we will hold on to the property for at least the first five years, um, and they have to hit several different benchmarks, one of those being jobs and at an average salary of $63,000, uh, which is which is the big one um, that for me, I think. And uh, so, yeah, it, it, gives us, it gives the state some added security <clears throat> of owning the building, owning the land, uh, getting a lease payment from them. So it will be uh, really huge uh, for the state to have those added insecurities with a company that's not as known as a you know Fortune 500 company. Now that's that state investment is to the tune of 290 million dollars. Is that correct? Uh, in total, yes, but it's not going to be it's not going to be like some of the other deals where they just hand over all the money. So they they have to hit those benchmarks to get get the uh, get most of that money. And my understanding is that the deal is that if these, this company does materialize and hit those benchmarks, that they'll eventually be the owner of the building and the land? Uh, yeah, that is correct. Uh, but that cannot happen until after the five full years of business okay. uh, in Weirton. So in doing your due diligence here on you know the playing the what-if game, uh, and we all hope this works and those jobs materialize because they're, they, they, they are high paying and uh, it would put West Virginia at the forefront in terms of some technology that we hope to use in the future. But playing the what if game, if this doesn't work out and this company doesn't get off the ground and the state ends up owning a building and land, has there been discussion about what would happen, what the state would do with that building and land? Uh, yes, yeah, so the part, part of it, part of this is the building has to be built and designed in a way that it could be very quickly transformed for another uh, another company if for some reason they did have to they did you know go belly up or, or they leave or anything like that um, so worst case scenario would be we have a building ready to go on 55 acres of an industrial park and we could bring another company and hypothetically the day after they close up shop so it, it, it really does show that everyone's ready to work and uh, both sides were willing to make a good deal and it just adds another layer of security on 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 top of this investment for the state of west virginia delegate willis delegate willis and so unless there's 290 million totally pledged to this project but unless they're viable and they meet these these benchmarks they're just getting a little bit at a time sort of like when you build a house you give the contractor a little bit at a time and then they get a lot of completion how many roughly how many jobs are we talking about on this project uh so the so the benchmark uh for on site is um 750 uh full-time full uh jobs but also they have to be 75 uh 750 jobs with an average salary of sixty three thousand dollars um so it's gonna it's gonna be good and then i mean with some of the reports you see i think the uh, west virginia university did one on form and um, it shows that I think in total there's going to be about when this hits, it's fully o- operational. Th- there will be at least three thousand um, follow-on jobs throughout the area um, from this from this uh, plant. Do they have if these benchmarks are met, if they're viable, if everything goes well? Is there a plan for expansion? Because I mean, I know this this field of energy collection, energy storage. Uh, with renewable energy is is really growing, is really building. I mean, it's something that that could explode in in America. 
is there a plan for them to be able to expand and you know maybe end up with 1500 2000 people if it if it's viable and if it works well which would be an even greater use of our 290 million worth of tax dollars uh, yeah, absolutely. I don't want to uh, speak for the company on that, but I, I don't see uh, why you wouldn't want to if you're succeeding really well. And uh, the best part about this location is they're taking uh, 55 acres of a 1,200-acre industrial park. So there would be hypothetically some room for them to grow right there on site um, if that day comes that they feel they need more than uh, 750 workers uh, in this plant. Delegate Jimmy Willis, our guest out of the 3rd Delegate District, that's Brook. County and uh, Weirton is uh, split in half there and divided into Brook County, according to what uh, Jimmy told us earlier. And I know you've got get, to get going in a minute here, Jimmy. In regards to any employment percentages for those who live in West Virginia as opposed to Pennsylvania or Ohio who will have these jobs, is there any consideration being given to that equation? Um, not, not that I've seen in the deal. Um, I, I couldn't say there was a specific number on that. Uh, right now, as of now. Would you think, would it be your best guess when you think back to the, the, the larger employers of the northern panhandle that most would still be West Virginians, or do those tend to divide evenly among the three states? Uh, I, I would think a lot of them would be um, West Virginians. Uh, some of them might be uh, Pennsylvanians or Ohioans at first, but I, I could see a scenario where a lot of them move into Weirton, uh, especially as these jobs start taking off. And but I think for for the majority, uh, there'll be West Virginians filling these filling these 750 jobs. Jimmy, thank you very much. Appreciate your time. Remember, your assignment is to see my cousin Vinny. Yeah, all righty. I'll make sure I do that. <laughs> the two Utes. Thanks, Jimmy. Have a good day. Thanks, That's Delegate. Delegate Jimmy Willis out of the third.